Okay, we are in now for the semifinals. We have Joey Baird versus David Wellage. Uh, they're bowling uh, for the it's the semifinals. The winner of this match will jump over to 19 and 20, and they'll be bowling versus Lester Wardlow for the finals. Uh, we are watching the Cincinnati Senior Masters here at Coleraine Bowl. play-by-play -play for the finals. Myself and Robin Wilson, we're going to sit back and let you enjoy the show here for this one. Hope everybody's having a great Sunday. Do us a favor, hit the share button.
Okay, David Wellage is going to be the winner of the semifinal match. And we are going to get ready for the finals. It'll be Lester Wardlow coming out of the winner's bracket. Dave Wellage out of the loser's bracket. If Les wins the first game, it's over. Dave's going to have to beat him twice coming out of the loser's bracket to win the tournament. We're going to get the camera set here and be ready to go. Joey Baird finishing third on a excellent tournament. Pulled great all weekend. got eliminated in the round before that from David Wellage.
should be nervous to think so. Everybody, we're going to have Lester Wardlow versus David Wellage. David's going to have to beat him in two games to win the tournament. Les is coming out of the winner's bracket. Dave out of the loser's bracket. Let's send them all off with a round of applause. Good luck, both of you. start to practice they get I believe one ball on each lane that's correct yeah. I have Robin Wilson with me hello Robin hello Les has been sitting for a little while so he did get to practice a little bit down on the other end About three games he's been sitting I yeah think. I guess I'd sit for a little while if I knew I was going to be in the finals I had to wait on a few folks so what we're watching here is the finals of the, it's the second annual uh, Cincinnati Senior Masters. We started yesterday with 46 bowlers. Uh, excellent turnout. Uh, the field was maxed at 64. I think up until Thursday or Friday we were sitting at about 20. So great job by everybody. Good job by Chris uh, rounding people up and getting them in here to bowl. Winner today is going to get $750. They're going to get a custom jersey from Bolify. They're going to get an entry into next year's Senior Masters. Okay. And then an uh, entry into the Ohio State Masters here in two weeks. Uh, also a Corian Bowl. Um, a ticket to the Hall of Fame banquet. Uh, that's right, ticket to the Hall of Fame banquet on October 4th. Hello, Lori. Wonderful. Try not to spill my drink. Hi, Lori. All right, Les is going to get started. Again, he's been bowling great all weekend. Uh, we had a star studded field of bowlers here. Saying made a little run today, Mike Ackerman. Um, it was it was almost like uh, Joey Baird. Joey Baird had a great day. He finished third. Um, definitely was definitely was a lot of fun. I'm gonna try to pay attention and click the camera angles around here so you can see some some pins going down. And we'll jump over to the score from time to time. Like so, Lester starts out with eight spare. Game. I yes. think it was the second game today. It was the second game. He got beat in the first round. So he's been bowling all day. He got beat in the very first round this morning at 9.30 by Joey, I believe. Um, and then went down to the next round and shot 300 and shot like 8.40 for his next three after he got beat. Scott, he's wearing those because it's Sunday. That's why he's got the holy jeans on That's right, Lori. And there's some of the folks that came in and bowled this weekend. Uh, first time they picked a ball up since March. You couldn't tell by watching them, though, that's for sure. No. Uh, Charlie Standish was yesterday's high qualifier. 12-16, uh, I believe, for five games. A crushing strike and another double to start off by Dave Willich. 
Robin, you bowled yesterday? I did. They are bowling on a challenge pattern today. It's uh, 43 feet, I believe, Kegel Chromium, 6 to 1 ratio. Uh, I would say it's a medium to high scoring pattern for the most part. Lester just didn't get that one back up the hill, leaving just the two pin. So they, you had to make good shots. It was a little bit out of bounds. Um, a lot of corner pins left on A lot this. of corner pins. We get pins bouncing around in this place pretty often, but uh, corner pins will get you sometimes. Again, we are going to ask if everybody would hit the share button on their mobile device they might be watching on. I'll try to get some folks watching this to finish out the finals. Again, David's going to have to win twice to win the tournament. There you go, Lester's starting to get loosened up again. You see Les with 39 in the second, striking the third. David with his first two. I think this is Wellage's eighth game in a row. It is, yeah. He's going to have to pull nine to win it after if you lose the first round. So that's, that's a lot of pulling in a day's time. So I think I paid for all seasons league last year where I barely had nine games. <laughs> definitely got lined up after that first game. Now the first game, in his defense, I watched him because he was on 17 and 18. He left three nine pins and in the 10th frame he left a four seven nine. So he was he was around the pocket and could have a couple breaks would have uh, maybe changed his fate and got him here a different way. But uh, he has definitely bowled well since that game. He didn't bowl bad that game. Ball checked up a little early, just leaving just a four. We have Bert Wellich standing behind me cheering for his son. I haven't seen Bert in quite a while. It's good to have him here. Covers the four easily. Well, both bowlers are now sitting at a max score of 279. Robin, I don't know how your scores were yesterday. Not too bad, not too good. I averaged about 190 for the five games. Which isn't bad. Uh, it took 1,037. Well, the Lester with a double. Good shot. So about 207 average, I believe. Is that worth it? Yeah, it's about 207. Right That's what it took to make the cut. Uh, there was a tie for the last spot, but they were the 15th and 16th, so they got they were both in. And we had a tie at the seventh and eighth. We had a tie in the well. middle with Bobby Bourne and uh, Mike Ackerman. We split the ties based on their highest game for that day. Looked like it was in off his hand a little bit, but it did hold off for him. Just again, leaving just the four. We will be back again tonight, streaming the finals for the Sunday Sweeper, starting at 6:30. Bowlers, if you're paying attention or if you're watching, there is plenty of room. Come on in. We do have several that have prepaid and ready to come on in, but. Uh, Hello, PG. Uh, but there's plenty of room for walk-ins, so if you want to come in and give us a try tonight on Boardwalk, I believe is what the vote was. A short, flat pattern. Should be a little fun tonight. Absolutely. 
um, like I said, once he got, he made his little move after the first game and started kicking out the nine, uh, he's been pretty much lights out all day. Greg Carpenter is watching. Hello, Greg. Dave with a current 11 pin lead. Double, increasing his lead to 21. Lester is going to have to get back on his strikes. You can definitely tell you made a good adjustment on that left lane. Well, that's why these guys are here. Dave's been bowling like that for a lot of years. I did not say that, Scott. I said fun pattern. Yes, absolutely, Lori. Nick had a Nick made the cut. He was the 16th seed, and he's only been back bowling for a couple of weeks, and he's getting out here and getting at it. He'll be back tonight for the sweeper. Covers up to 10 easily. Making spares right now is not going to cut it. He's going to need to get some strikes working. Hey, Joel. Uh, Charlie Standish was wanting to know where you were at with the Bloody Marys today. Yep. We got that one started in early again. Less is from the Hillsboro area. Um, this tournament is open to anybody who bowls in the Greater Hamilton Association, the Greater Cincinnati Association, as well as the Miami Valley Association uh, for this year. Yeah, when I was talking to the bowls out uh -oh. in Hillsboro and at uh, community lanes as well. Okay. Les is going to have to shake it off. Dave's going to. Dave gets another couple strikes here. He's just going to be getting himself ready for the second match. And David Wellage bowls over at uh, Western Bowl. He's bowled there his entire life, I believe. Yeah, look at that one, pretty good. Not only is he going to have to bowl nine games to win, he's going to have to bowl nine games in about three hours. Right. Go, go, go. Yeah, we got started about 20 after 9 today. Yeah, we practice. Yep. straight through. Yep, yeah, got that one to the right. Ball floated just a little bit. Left the flat 10. about a 20 pin lead right now depending on what Lester does here but uh, you don't want to give somebody an opening and he struck just like he needed to there's a little double here and it'll make Dave, uh, Dave show up for the ninth attempt and throw some good shots which I feel like he probably will. This is key right here, though. He's going to have to have this one. Oh, boy. I'll let that one get away from him a little bit.
exactly right, Gene. All right, not a whole lot you can do with that spare. I think we'll all be ready for a nap after this. Well, there's a pretty good chance I'm going to go home and take one before I have to come back tonight. I don't sleep at night, but I can sure take some good naps in the afternoon. I'm with you. Soft tunnel again. Practice. There it is. That's how you make a tent pin right in the middle. Zero pins don't keep carrying over. Extended clap from the crowd from Ryan. Half ten there for less than a tenth. Greg, this is the finals. Uh, these will be the, the only two bowling. It's the winner's bracket winner versus the loser's bracket winner, which was less than the winner's bracket, Dave, and the loser's bracket. So Dave has to – Dave beat him the first game, and so they're going to they're gonna bowl another one for the – overall, the winner of the next match will win the tournament. And I think Joey Baird came in third. Joey Baird would have been third. And then he was our fourth. said Brad Ingram is fourth. time you were eligible, wasn't it? No, I, I couldn't bowl it last year. I okay. had a conflict. Well, 
Bliss got that one left off his hand, but it was left just enough to carry a Brooklyn. A strike nonetheless. We don't crate him. Nope. X is an X. Thank God. <laughs> straight back. out the 5-7, starting out with a double. You are planning to attend the Hall of Fame banquet. The deadline is coming up soon on September 1st. Make sure you get your tickets. How do they get the tickets? You can um, mail a check for $40 to Gary Crooker at our office. Or if you see a board member out and about in one of your leagues, we're happy to take into the office for you. There you go. That simple. I went last year. It's a good show. I imagine I will go this year too. Very, uh, very excited. So, who are the inductees this year? It's RJ. Almost got the wobbler to fall, leaving just a six pin. The inductees this year are Brian James and RJ Pollard, Eddie Wetterman, Benny Houston, Al Diker, Charlene Schroeder, Glenn Schmidt, and Jim, Jimmy Lyles will also be um, honorees. So we have a lot of um, wonderful people that are going to be inducted this year. Looking forward to that. Pretty good cast of names there. And we're going to be giving out our um, open and women's city winners. We'll get their trophies that evening. Senior singles. Yeah, we're doing jerseys this year. I'm actually back there ordering them now. I was waiting for the winner of this to finish the order. Oh, yeah, and our um, Planky City Cup winners will get their trophies. Yeah, and right. we'll, it'll be our first year to recognize um, that new um, tournament. Yeah. So we'll have the Planky family in attendance as well. We're seeing a wonderful final match here at Colerain Bowl. Glad you're here watching with us. That's right. Well, he's got a good look right now. Yes, he does. Got a good look on, on both lanes right now. <laughs> McGill Sr. is watching with us. Hello, Mom and Dad. Hello. <laughs> All right, 
nice comeback after that. still has a max score of 265. Mr. Willage has them all so far. <coughs> yep, that's all that one. Got his hand around it and uh, got it to the pocket, but flat 10. Hey, look. Tom McGill is watching, too. Tom McGill Jr. Hello, Tommy. It's a family affair. That's right. David. Oh, boy. David, David, David. It's more of a mental mistake than anything when you do that. Yes. Been there many times. That's a spare he's probably made thousands of times in his life with just the 10 pin. The righties leave him a little more than, leave that more than anything else on the lane. And uh, I'd imagine his spare percentage on shooting a 10 pin in his life is probably, you know, 98%. out the eight pin. <laughs> Let's see how Les answers back here on the right lane. Yeah, we can throw a double here and get this match within two pins. up the single pin spare. Throat's a little dry. We started league meetings and the last couple nights that's all I've been doing is talking. So we had a mint save sent over to me here. Dave's mom, so we'll see if that helps out a little bit. Lane leaving just the 10 pin though. Oh, no. oh, he just gave it right back to him. Last with 133 through 7. Dave's got 117 in the fifth. Strike up in the sixth. This next shot is a pretty crucial one in the match. Step down on top of him a little bit here with a strike. He answers back with a double, get, getting the 10 pin to fall this time. Yep. That was a big double in the match right there. Les is going to have to. Pretty much, he still has a max of uh, 223. Dave's at a max of 267 and pacing in the 220s right now. Well, we got a few more people watching now. Bill Connell, Daryl Perry. How's he like it? Yep, just checked up a little early, leaving a four pin. He 
runs this down, he will have a 33 pin advantage through seven frames with a spare up in the eighth. Again, pretty much forcing Lester's hand to start striking. Right. right in the middle. That's fair. Let's see what Les is going to do now on this right lane. That's correct, Scott. These are all big at bats for Les all the way through this game now. He's just not able to get the ball to roll up strong on that right lane. back to a max score of 213. He's got that one to the left or to the right a little bit. He's been pulling him on that lane. He got that one to the right a little bit, leaving just a seven pin. going to leave it to David to have to mark one time in two frames yes. to win the tournament. Yeah, Les can only go 2-0-2 two -oh -two when he strikes out the 10th. Max score. So you just want to keep it close and avoid a disaster. Or you could just strike and not have to worry about it, right? That's a great shot. It's been a pleasure watching all these gentlemen this morning. Absolutely. Some great bowling. Mr. Wellage is going to walk out of here with about $1,000 in cash and prizes today, right? Forty-five for Mr. Wellage. Less. Uh, let's see if. Let's see if Less can uh, just go ahead and finish it up and throw a couple shots. Get a few strikes here. Is that free? Oh, I'm sure he has some more left in him. There it is. Yeah, they'll they'll all fall now. could have probably thrown these between his legs, standing on his head, and they would have struck, because now it doesn't 
doesn't matter. And it's good to see him finish off with a strong 10th frame. Certainly nothing to be ashamed of. He threw that one good, too. There it is. Good finish. Certainly nothing, <clears throat> nothing to be ashamed of. Uh, excellent, excellent weekend for Lester with 202. Finishing second in the City Senior Masters, and Dave Wellage is this year's champion. Uh, we're going to stay live and do the trophy presentation. check. He gets that nifty little trophy behind him. Don't drop it. Make sure it's fixed Again, excellent job. Great bowling, everybody. We will see you later tonight for the Sunday Sweeper Finals. People are taking pictures up there now. We'll see you Sunday or see you tonight for the finals for the sweeper. And uh, everybody have a good Sunday afternoon.